Mr. Kyle could have come. I don't know. I have guided many hunters here. It's easy to lose one's way. And the old shoemaker said that in the... Stop cold... talking about what the old shoemaker said. But what he says comes through. You're a superstitious fool. Come on. Look. This has happened like the old shoemaker predicted. In the cold wilderness, the leader of our government shall meet death. That's enough. Let's take him back to the city immediately. You're late, my son. I've been waiting all morning to hear your steps. I had business. Your prediction came true, Father. My prediction? You mean the words you told me to say? You promised to have faith in my judgment. Think of it. You are a shoemaker and I'm a shoemaker's son. That tomorrow I may be one of her country's leaders. Oh, you cannot lead with terror and violence. I can no longer watch you destroy in order to make what I say come true. You are my son, but I cannot continue to outrage my conscience. But it is impossible to stop now. Today they are shouting your name in the streets. Tomorrow your words will lead the people behind us. Oh, it's only impossible not to feel shame for what we have already done. It can never be too late to stop. If we give the government time to investigate, they will not forgive us so easily. And for me it would mean imprisonment for life. Is that what you want? Um, there must be another way. Either you continue to help me, or you condemn me. The choice is yours to make. I've lived and worked all my life for you. Why have you brought me to this decision? Because you are my father. I would give no other man the power of life and death over me. It's a sad gift. What do you want me to do? You must go out and make another prediction. Tomorrow, three of our ministers are leaving by plane. The plane will crash, and they will die. That's what you must predict. A new, freely elected democratic government was in danger of falling because an old, blind shoemaker had accurately predicted three national disasters. Weeks ago, the old shoemaker's first prediction had been a curiosity item on the back page. But now it was news. My syndicate's local office sent Tony Forrest down to fill me in on the latest details. And I arranged an interview for you with Prime Minister Regine for this afternoon. Oh, good. Thanks, Tony. What about the shoemaker? Have they arrested him yet? What for? He predicts things and they come true. This is a true democracy, Mike. They don't chop a man's head off just because he doesn't like the government. Yeah. Where's that car? Uh, you wait here, I'll go get it. Okay. Sorry, sir. Restricted area. No visitors permitted. Oh, excuse me. Hey, Mike! Must be a very special airplane in there, huh? It is. It's supposed to take three ministers out of here tonight. So what? The shoemaker predicted it was going to crash. Naturally, Mr. Powers, we question the old shoemaker. But he still insists that mystical voices advise him on his predictions. What's your opinion about him, sir? Of course, Mr. Powers. I don't say the old man is lying. Perhaps he, he believes he's telling the truth. Mm. It may be possible that he's part of a group that's trying to undermine your government. I'll try to be fair as well as logical, Mr. Powers. It's difficult for men to judge voices. That may be beyond his understanding. But when the voices speak only of politics... Yes? Mr. Prime Minister. Demonstrations in the streets are growing worse. I imagine they would. Mr. Tarsus, our Minister of Internal Security. Mr. Powers? I did, yeah. 
He has come to do a newspaper story on our situation here. This shoemaker is a fanatic followed by rabble. The devotion will last only until he gets wrong. Unfortunately, he hasn't guessed wrong yet. Have you heard his last prediction? Yes, I have. That plane carrying the ministers is being guarded every moment. No detail has been overlooked this time. Wouldn't it be wiser to have your diplomats travel by some other means, by a boat or train? We have discussed that. Uh, that would be an admission that we put faith in his predictions. You should have allowed me to arrest that blind traitor at the beginning. If I had, he would have become a martyr. Perhaps. But now he is being worshipped as a saint. I tell you, if things continue at this rate, you may have to declare martial law. That would be a sad necessity. In view of the situation, I wonder if it might be possible for me to interview the shoemaker. Of course. So far, there has been no tampering with individual liberties. Martial law has not as yet been declared. Mm. Now, if you will go with Mr. Tarsus, he will fill in all the details. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. It can be done at any time now. I can see no reason to wait. It's just that I'm tired of waiting. Yes, it's all arranged. The plane will crash. There's nothing to worry about. I'm constantly with my father. He will say nothing. Very well, goodbye. Well, put down the shoes now, father. You must rest. Was that the man who comes to give you orders? He's a friend. If there should come any visitors, be careful what you say. Who is this man? You need only know he's a good patriot, as myself. Hmm. You are too selfish to be a patriot. I learned that too late. I'm looking for Mr. Myrick. It's late. My father is tired. No, no. Come in, sir. Mr. Myrick, my name is Michael Powers. I'm from the Associated News Service. People are talking a great deal about you, sir, and they talk both for and against you. I wonder if you'd mind answering some questions. My father doesn't have to tell you anything. That's right, Mr. Myrick. You don't have to answer anything unless you want to. Are you inclined to believe or to disbelieve me, Mr. Powers? My purpose in coming here is to interview you, Mr. Myrick, and report factually what you have to say. Nothing more. What do you wish to know? You say that you hear voices that guide your predictions. Could you explain these voices? Well, they are simply voices. When I'm working alone or when I'm going to bed, some force has seen fit to speak through me. My father's predictions have come true. What more proof do we need? Have these voices you hear ever spoken to you of things that are not political? My father foresees destiny, not horse races. Son, there's no need. Sorry, I didn't say I'd be here. I was just passing by. Oh, no, come in, Benzis. I have your shoes right here. Oh, I come back another time. No, here. Here they are. You can pay for them tomorrow. Can't you see my father as a reporter interviewing him? Of course. Well, continue, Mr. Powers. I don't think there's much to be gained until I've talked to a few other people. I'll come back tomorrow. But uh, your question should be answered. Thank you. But first they should be asked. Goodbye, Mr. Mark. Why did the newspaper man leave so quickly? I'm not sure. No, it is impossible. He couldn't know who Bensis is. Why should that matter? Bensis is one of the guards assigned to protect the plane that leaves tonight. The plane with the ministers. The plane you predicted would crash.
Shoemaker and his son behaved as if they knew this man very well. Mr. Tarsus, you've got to ground the plane that this man was supposed to be guarding. It's too late now. For security reasons, the ministers took off half an hour ago, secretly. I know that's none of my business, sir, but I suggest you radio that plane to land immediately. Don't you understand it is... Yes? Here are all the files from all the personnel, sir. Good. If this serial number is in our files, we'll find the man. I can't understand it, sir. Those guards were hand-picked. That couldn't be a mistake. Oh, let's check and find out. This is the one. Private Charles Scott. Well, that wasn't his name. They called him Benzies. No, that's not the man I followed. Huh? There must be some mistake. That's not the man. Hello? Hello, hello. Get me North Airport. Break through the lines. This is an emergency. Desertion, sir. Yes, come in on the teletype. The plane carrying the ministers crashed ten minutes ago. And now, to return to the second part of Foreign Intrigue. Listen to them. Who would believe it could go this far? That stupid old shoemaker is responsible for this. He should be arrested. Out of the question. That crowd will tear us to pieces if we touched him now. You can't run a government of superstitions, Mr. Prime Minister. If what Mr. Powers tells us can be proven, we're up against more than superstition. If you can find this man, Benzies, I can identify him. I'm sure the other guards at the airport can too. Testimony of the guards would be meaningless. They have already been questioned. They saw him do nothing. Only you can connect him with the shoemaker. That would be enough. But we must do something. The staff at my ministry is completely disorganized. Mr. Prime Minister, I suggest that you declare martial law and accept extraordinary powers. That's what we struggle to prevent. We are still a democracy, gentlemen. And we solve our problems as such, or not at all. <laughs> There is your answer, Mr. Prime Minister. This is not the time for theorists. It is an emergency. Call a special cabinet meeting, immediate. One way or the other, we shall have to decide. Today in the back door. All right. This way? Yes. <laughs> Somebody, Mr. Powers? Follow us. The government knows what you're up to, Theo. What the government knows and what you know is no longer of any importance. In a few hours, the people will rise and establish us as their leaders. It's Theo. Empty, so up. Two men. 
I thought they were friends. I asked for Myrick. Did you tell them where he is? Yes. Before I knew what they wanted, one of them took up a knife. But I... I can't understand. It's easy. You and your father and Benzies were used. Now they don't need you any longer. Except that they'll try to kill you off too and continue to use you as martyrs. It's ugly, but perfect. It can't be true! Yes, it is, and you know it. If your father's still alive, there's not much time to save him. <coughs> Where is your father? My place, quickly. You go that way. And you stand there. If you see my father, yell. Come along. Because they've lied to you all along. Tell me, who gave orders to Field? Oh, I don't know. He often came to the shop, but I never heard his name or his voice. We've got to get to the state ministry. Right now, it's important that people see you safe and alive. Come along. This will give the prime minister the powers of a dictator. If he signs. He has to. There are demonstrations in the streets, and it could get worse. Things must be handled swiftly before matters are completely out of hands. Here, take it to him. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I must speak to you right away, Mr. Tarsus. Certainly. You'd better get that to the Prime Minister. I was told I couldn't see the Prime Minister. He asked me to give those orders. That's a national emergency, Mr. Powers. The shoemaker is ready to confess, Mr. Tarsus, and I have him here, in the ministry building. Where? He's in an empty room down the hall. I've been trying to get to the Prime Minister. If Mike is ready to make a full confession, that's another matter. You wait with him. I'll get the Prime Minister myself. Good. I've just come from the Minister of Internal Security, Mr. Myrick. He's bringing the Prime Minister here. Oh, I only hope it isn't too late. It won't be. Shh. What is it? Listen. That's the man. What man? That's the man. I recognize his steps. It's the man who came to see my son. That's the man who gave the orders. He's the man who killed my son. Tarsus. A well-kept secret. Not anymore. I intend to correct that right now. Your organization is broken, Tarsus. You're finished. On the contrary. The Prime Minister is about to sign a proclamation giving himself dictatorial powers. As soon as the people hear that, they'll break. Then I'll step forth and save them from totalitarianism. Why should the people accept you? Politics, my friend. The best way to become a dictator is to replace one. We were fools. We believed you. And you killed my son. It was you he wanted murdered, Myrick. He could use your death to turn the people against the government. It would have helped. It still may. Turn around, both of you. Oh, and I helped you to do all this. But now you must be stopped. Stay where you are. You are an insane animal! Ah! Here, quickly! Ah! Force it! 
badly? No, no. I'll be all right. Wait right here. I'll go for help. The window. The American newspaper is inside. Find him and shoot to kill. Closed off and shoot him on sight. You have my authority. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Powers is innocent. Powers? Listen, I'm the Prime Minister. What is it you want to say? Oh, Mr. Tarsus is trying to kill the American newspaper man because... Don the Cedar. In here! Find him. Stop! Causes, you are under arrest for sabotage and treason. Charles, are you all right? <laughs> I am now. Thanks for the surprise. Thank the old shoemaker. He managed to find us and tell us before he died. Oh? There wasn't anything we could do. Well, what he did was wrong, but the poor old fellow was misled. Hmm. Is there any way of handling this without making a villain out of the old man? I think so. We can try. Hmm. Good. <laughs> 